Welcome back to Improvision Entertainment. My name is Hunter Munn, and this is more of Euro Truck Simulator 2, in which we are going around trying to pick up uh, locations in Italy by doing a couple of short uh, transportation types things. Molly is here saying hi, but she is not feeling well, so unless Molly is going to be engaged in the chat, which it doesn't sound like she's going to be, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the news. So um, this is your, uh, if you will, trigger warning for the news, because the news can be pretty bad. Um, this will be for Friday, August 5th, 2022, in case you're curious about the... Hold on. I'm having trouble clicking on the thing. That's, that's, that's what this is over here. Hopefully this won't be too bad, but you know... You could have looked into the bot thing before you signed on the dotted... Wait, what? Uh, on the dotted there we go. And it's Friday, so they're doing the TYT chant. All right, make sure I can see the chant. Actually, make sure the audio is... That, that level is a little loud. Hold on. I want it to be audible, but not louder than me. Okay. That doesn't seem to make a big difference. All right. In any event, people can let me know on chat if that sounds loud enough. All right. So news is happening. See you in the future, Tech. Have a good one. Oops. We just need to find a way to get Adrian in studio. When's that going to happen, America? That's my question for you. I'm John Idarola. That's Brett. He's actually he's he's here. I can you can stick our you're laying down, but you're still here. All right. There you go. Oh. Let me know if um, um if you want me to turn the news off, Molly, because um, I kind of need something to play and maybe not be talking so much. But I do want to keep driving. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here virtually. <laughs> she would prefer now never to no, return. No. Uh, you can, of course, find Adrian in a lot of different places, but always holding it down on Indisputable on Tuesdays. Uh, Brett hosts Happy Half Hour, and also tonight we'll be hosting Game Busters. Do you guys yet know what you're going to be playing? So originally the plan Laying down because it helps you, the left side, stay in everything in your stomach? Hmm. Hmm. Or the game where it's like golf, but with race cars. And then there was this weird joke in the private messages with me, Adi, and Jordan about it adult toy game which i don't think oh we can play on twitch so i don't think so. uh just join and find out and ask jorby he's yeah. in the chat really chill guy yeah i question whether they were even talking about video Ten games rock. but anyway we've got, we've got a lot of news to talk about everyone so thank you for joining us for this program it's been a pretty eventful week some say historic some rock. say we're on the brink of war with Ten china rock. People say so many different things. We're going to be running through a few of them, but we will be starting off with, you know, progress on uh -huh. his agenda, I suppose. Why don't we get into that? Arizona progress on Biden's agenda. The centrist fiscal hawk Kirsten Cinema has apparently signed off on the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, but getting her support came, of course, I at a cost. That. And it's a cost that regular people are going to bear, never the wealthy. She said Exit. that Democrats yeah. had, quote, agreed to remove a key tax policy targeting wealthy investors that aimed to address what is known as the carried interest loophole. Pay no attention to that. They had made additional tweaks to a second provision that imposes a new minimum tax on corporations that Keep currently pay nothing to the Exit. U.S. government. I just love the idea of making a change to a proposed regulation that either Exit. results right. or doesn't result in the government making tens of billions of dollars that could go towards social programs. Just call it a little tweak. He's tweaking the legislation there just a little bit to benefit the wealthy uh, corporations and individuals. Uh, she also won unspecified changes to the structure of the reconcili reconciliation bill's proposed 15% corporate minimum tax, which was aimed okay. at preventing large corporations from dodging taxes by stashing profits overseas. And of course, literally none of these many concessions that had to be made to one individual senator had anything whatsoever to do with the will of the people of Arizona. They, like Democrats, and indeed overwhelming number of independents as well, across America all loved components of this bill to the extent that they knew anything. It's complicated, of course, and we've only known about it for a week. Uh, but they seem to have no problem with it. There were some uh, business interests in her state who had problems with it, though, and we will get into that 
in a little bit. But um, Adrian, I want to throw to you first. Uh, history apparently has been made, barring the God damn it. process that will begin this weekend. I guess uh, I'm listening and not paying attention. It's taken us to the IRA being close to passage. You know what? It seems very on point for our legislature at this current time uh, in terms of just the fact that the Democrats aren't aligned. You know, the fact is we have a great, uh, a great nice number, but we don't have enough in number and people actually living up to their labels and titles in any way. And Kristen Semina is very much a, a reflection of that. And so the fact that, you know, she waited until this last no. moment to jump in and say something and then hold us all hostage, it really is kind of a reflection of us not being united and having united front. It's a lot of consecutive yeah, roundabouts. As much down as we need to be getting done and should be. The second yeah. Perhaps. It really shows that Kirsten Cinema is a uh, representative of the people with billions of dollars. <laughs> not really the people no. of Arizona. There was a, a little bit of an addendum for drought water, and that was one piece of legislation she fought for. Of the so five uh, aspects of the legislation that she fought for, the other five, which is hilarious, something that will benefit 100% of people in Arizona, just kind of a, I guess Get I should, to, to save life. face, do something that helps my constituents. But mm -hmm. the rest of the stuff that she fought Turn for back. was like, hey, I would like hedge fund managers to spend less in personal taxes, not any operational taxes for running their hedge fund or paying out their employees. The money they make as a salary, essentially, I want that to get paid at a clip of probably about 17 percentage points less than what they should, they would have paid if they had like a normal job that made equally that much money. Yeah, it seems to be the case that the harder you actually work for your money, the All more right. you need to give away of it. I need to go into the straight dotted line. Out, except that it doesn't because the people with the money made all of these rules and continue to. Isn't that nice? Um, now, we're, we're going to get eventually into our overall impressions of at least this current iteration of the bill. But I want to talk a little bit more about what has been changed as well as give you a bit of a warning. So, um, have you ever faced a formality that uh, should be super easy to get past, but is still scary? Like, like having to ask your proposed bride's father for her hand or something? Well, get a load of this sentence. Subject to the parliamentarian's review, I'll move forward, said Cinema. Oh. So, in theory, that should be nothing. And even if the parliamentarian didn't like this current iteration of the bill, they could overrule the parliamentarian. However, the parliamentarian provides for centrists like cinema uh, a get-out-of-having-to-do-anything-free card. This, the the uh, parliamentarian could have a problem with the entire thing or uh, small elements of it. Small right. elements, perhaps, that will sap our whatever enthusiasm for it. Or maybe we'll change things that will result in cinema no longer being able to support it. She'd love to, but she can't. And then, of course, once we get into the weekend, there's going to be a number of potentially unlimited amendments put forward for this, and God only knows what changes will come from there. But we do already have one idea of a change that's been made. The Democrats are apparently going to seek a new 1% tax on corporate stock buybacks, a move that would make up at least some of the revenue that might have been lost as a result of the previous changes that we discussed uh, to taxes. Get ready. And get so run. she apparently is okay with that, although bear in mind, in, in uh, you know, prelude to all of this, she faced an ad blitz and aggressive lobbying from the Arizona Chamber of Commerce, as well as other business interests. I love at least hearing that she's talking to the Arizona Chamber of Commerce rather than just doing what, you know, Wall Street literally thousands of miles on the other side of the country does. It right. has a nice local flavor to the corruption. The stock buybacks thing. Let's talk about negotiation tactics. Keep left Those stock and buybacks then turn should left. be barred. You should not be able to do stock buybacks. And your policy should either be to end them or to provide some kind of tax structure that disincentivizes a company from executing that kind of weird financial play. Does 1% not do that? And I would say if I were to make $100 off a transaction and instead I would make $99 off that transaction, I would still probably go forward with that transaction. Now, the stock buyback is just the most wildly corrupt thing. It is essentially, there's a better way to explain it, but this is the most fun way to explain it. <laughs> they are like, oh, I'm the executives and I make, I have a lot of stock. And the stock's a certain value. Right. And then 
They're also in charge of the company. So the company starts buying the stock. And then those people in charge are like, wow, it seems like people are buying the stock now, and that drives the stock up. We don't know how that happened, but somehow the stock's up, and it's the stock market. So capitalism means that, or the free market means that it's basically worth what you it's say it's worth. Exit. But they absolutely are just manipulating their stock prices yeah. in a exit. way that doesn't yeah. even benefit these companies in the long run. Yeah. What they should be doing with that money is making, in, you know, capital investments in their future, but this weird fiduciary responsibility some of them might have might even legally in some cases bar them from doing something that benefits their shareholders in the long run because the shareholders are like, well, my quarterly money's due, so please drive up the stock prices because I hold shares in that stock. It is yeah. so insane. Yeah, no, the system definitely seems... Like I it is structured that. in a way such that uh, it will enable and empower almost corruption to a certain extent. Uh, at least people can fill their coffers in the short term and not necessarily uh, look yeah. out for shareholders in the long run. But that seems to be something that's very much a feature of our capitalistic society. Act like there's no future or nothing is coming ahead in the, in the future and there's no need to prepare for others who are coming up next. Rather, I need to take care of me, me, me now. Uh, even if it means that I'm going to deplete all of the resources and assets uh, as a result of me being satisfied. 100%. Well, look, um, again, we don't know what's going to change come this weekend. We do have broad brush strokes of some of what is currently in the bill. And we've talked about it at length on this program and other programs on the network, but it includes things like uh, caps on out-of-pocket expenses on prescription drugs for senior citizens, free vaccines, and being able to negotiate, uh, that's like sort of the, the healthcare component of this. Uh, there's money to disincentivize, uh, you know, dirty fossil fuel energy production to subsidize new energy production, creating jobs at the same time, as well as building out a network of, I think, a half a million uh, fast EV chargers across the country, subsidizing uh, electric vehicles, uh, helping to subsidize factories changing over to produce those. There's a lot of components like this. It's a lot of bad stuff, too, as we've talked about, uh, that Manchin was able to get in there in terms of uh, pipelines and all that. I know that of course. everyone disagrees about how good this is. Some people call it the most historic legislation ever. Some people don't even think it should be passed. I, I'm curious. I'm going to start with you, Adrian. What do you think about this? How, how enthused should the Democrats or maybe progressives be about the IRA actually being passed? Uh, you know, I, I do very much appreciate the fact that we've never seen anything necessarily like this or to a certain extent. I also very much appreciate, uh, you know, something Bernie Sanders had voices and it doesn't go far enough. Um, and so as much as I would like to see there be advancement and some change, I, I also would like it to be something significant that will impact Americans' lives on a, a regular daily basis and something that is also going to be concrete. Uh, it's just, it's so incredibly difficult in part when you have so many members of your party who are working against you because they're trying to fill their own coffers. And so, and it's also hard to have any kind of faith in the system. Well, the people who are in Congress are there for themselves so and not for the rest of us, this, generally this speaking. So, in the long run, it almost seems like an exercise in potential disappointment. I think the Democrats, like, need to pass it. Now, whether that benefits all of Americans in the way that I want that to happen, that's a completely different subject. But the Democrats desperately need to pass this. They need to be on record doing things that not only improve uh, you know, climate change initiatives but also reduce inflation. They need to then do something that they saw so hard at, which is message about their successes in ways that resonate with people. And not only that, they need to attack the people on the other side of the aisle that stand in their way because 100% of uh, people in the Republican Party are against the stuff in this bill. Yeah. And they need to trumpet that. And then when it comes primary time, cinema, albeit she is really good at trying to convince people in a primary that she saw such a progressive, she is on the Republican side when it comes to things that are not only beneficial to, uh, to super rich people who literally run hedge funds. It's like saying, I'm with villain. That's, that's her. I'm with villain. MO. But I like it. Message that, like, yo, she Get is ready to that policy you. of being with villain, believe it or not, is wildly un. Calvia discovered. Bon voyage. I just have no faith that the 14 Democrats of 31 and something else. Get off its keister and fight anyone but progressive.
One of the Bon Voyages that I need to look up. I haven't seen polls in at least a few months, but she had tanked among Democrats uh, inside of Arizona, which is which is good, not only because I want her to, she's the devil, but also um, the fact that a politician... Hey, Molly, if you're still there, are you, unpopular stands, are you feeling any better? I say that normally, we just mean it should yeah, be or as... And uh, is this don't understand it or the media clouds it. news distracting case, they saw to me trying to, like, say my voice? Yet, which is novel. I, and I would love to I would love to see more of that honestly let's get some of that in West Virginia maybe we could export some um, but anyway in terms of this bill like the changes that she made to the taxes all Ethan made a little more money what could have been potentially good changes to the tax code but that said from my evaluation I didn't expect anything of this to happen the most important individual part of it to me is the climate uh, components here so to my mind, if it didn't have any of the tax stuff, I would Damn, that was all waiting on a yield? It. And honestly, the only reason it's in there is because of Joe Manchin, because he supposedly cares so much about deficits, and I guess he's sort of showing it by insisting that this is in here, and so I guess that's good. Um, it, the, the, the climate components could have been far stronger. They're undercut needlessly in a couple of different areas that give massive amounts of money to corporations, and there is the fear that each of these areas, whether it's climate-based or about health care or about taxes, could, in theory, disarm future efforts in those areas. That maybe in some hypothetical world we could have had a better climate bill in two years, but might not because of this. Or better reforms to corporate taxes, but we might not because of this. That said, I don't know, planning on anything to happen in American government seems like a losing, uh, a losing way to approach it. So, so I, I would say I am largely happy that something happened because I did not expect it to. I, I would say that. Really, really fast before you jump in. No. I want to throw out what Jank had to say. Because he's not here. Yeah. He's very far away. Okay. Uh, but he did have to say, it's one thing to vote yes on new Schumer Mansion Cinema bill. It's another to celebrate it. It's the usual 5% of what we started with. Already every reporter is doing marketing for it by calling it historic. We said they were always going to sh shred uh, Build Back Better, and we were right. Yeah. I would say, yes, we were right. Although we also thought they wouldn't end up passing literally anything, so I guess we were right and wrong. Um, I don't think it's 5%, you know, depending on whether you're really talking about 2.5 trillion, 4 trillion, you can do the math on what, 739. That train is loud. Is, it's a small portion. I don't think it's just 5%. So that's my... Uh, this is a nice area. little town, though. Yeah, Coastal City. That's the way I prefer it. So what did you have to say? I would just say that, like, when you say we don't expect the, the, the government to do anything, well, they will do something frequently, the bare minimum. The question is when, and the when is probably about now. Like, they're about to go on August recess to go campaign after, right before the midterms happen. We got less than 100 days. This is the time. This yeah. is the Kairos. This is the right time for them to do this. Um, and they've still got a, there's tens of ways, tons of rapids ahead, parliamentarian, as John mentioned, and then, uh, Luca the making money. Ramo, which is always I believe we're trying to get to 280,000 right now. We see many times where cinema's like, I don't like it anymore. My crystals tell me that it's bad for business. <laughs> <laughs> that is possible. Adrian, any other thoughts? Yeah, I do actually, I, you know what, even though the media is hyping it up as historic, if that's what we need people to believe so that they go out and vote for the D, that would be amazing, and I appreciate that a lot. Um, so I will let that slide, but I, I completely agree. Like, the fact that we only have 5% of uh, what was originally there, it's just, it's so reflective of our government. Um, this is a really nice coastal road. People to go and vote during the midterms uh, so that we can hopefully keep some semblance of control and maintain some, some, some kind of order. I, I am here for it. Yeah, and the only other thing I'll say is... All right, red flag is on the that, map. You know, if you ask Kirsten Sinema or, you know, any politician in D.C. or whatever, we're, we're, we're crazy radicals or whatever, but I don't, I don't think that we are. I think that we're realists. I think that we like to give credit when credit is due. Um, we have been calling not only for legislation, for instance, to address the climate crisis, but also, uh, far more generally, just calling for the Democrats to literally act like they don't want to get absolutely clobbered thing. in the midterms. And this is, in theory, again, assuming that it happens, this is them doing something. So that is good, you know, and we should acknowledge that all of the pressure we Exit and others, are, and well, by we, I mean the movement, not TYT specifically, have been putting on them, uh, does appear to have had some effect, or at least... Bon Voyage 15 to 31, and all around the Isle of Beauty, and 4 maybe, of 6. Maybe if oh, so the island has its own set of achievements. That's interesting. It is pretty beautiful. So 
Democrats that people like it when you do things. And when you message about it, they're gonna get an automatic big assist by the media, obviously outside of Fox News or whatever. And so all of all of this is good. You cannot pull through that until those things are all the way up, unlike the toll booths. You know, say that we're getting some of the policy stuff we want, and also strategically, you would just expect that a party would want to stay in power, and at least they're finally acting like it. They could do other stuff. They could, they could cancel student loan debt, you know, but they're they're taking care of some of the ACA changes. We get another train right away. In the ramps, yeah. Wow. Hopefully, this is the first of what could be several good policy-related moves that would benefit the individuals. Well, in that case, we're going to go to our first break. When we come back, uh, Nancy Pelosi decided to, I, I almost used the word I don't think we're supposed to, uh, to anger a significant portion of the world's population. We'll break hey, down the point. consequences for that after rock. this. Hi. Welcome to the social break, everyone. Let's see what's going on out there. Uh, don't shoot, I'm the goalkeeper. The Ten member comment says, Brett on the main show. Oh, damn. I'd like Does to issue a complaint. Okay, make it fast. The Let's fact go. that it's my face and then Yaz Min's face, mm -hmm. that's not fair. You should put a buffer in between because she looks so much better than me in that image. I'm like, they, they really it's just should. Like someone who is genuinely better. Le Lil Rose. Warning at least. Le 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 Il Rose. Uh, is that the little house? Like, uh, like a, a mud Maybe? monster, like some weird like. <laughs> so ease up. And then be like, Brett, yeah. no, I like down. That. And then you can go back up. Then Steve Bannon. And then Bannon. And then so me, Bannon, yes. <laughs> okay. okay, hold on a second. Uh, Perpendicular Time says, this is a bad climate bill. Funding renewables and doing nothing else is not good. You can fund renewables all you want, but if you're not ending fossil fuels, the climate catastrophe only continues to grow. Expanding fossil fuels at this stage is absolutely bad. Um, I, I, I don't agree that that's necessarily reflective of the bill. I mean, it might end up being reflective of the bill after this weekend, but... But no, I mean, there, there is incentivizing moving away from this fossil fuel energy production. Also transportation, which is going to cut how much oil we're, we're, we're uh, expending. Um, like, like I said, it's not the bill that, you know, the AOC would write or something like that. But I don't think it's fair to say that it's only giving money to, like, solar or wind. It, it is a little bit more comprehensive than that. Um, but thank you for your commentary. Uh, Snozberries. Um, does taste like snozberries, it turns out. But anyway, has also been with us for 18 months and says woo. Thank you for being here. Uh, Samuel in the Con Dragon said, Brett, you leave your house? When chased. Rarely. When sent out of it. No, I came, I came because I decided it would be fun to see your face, John. Edwin's good to face. See you too. And Edwin as well. I'd right also like there. to add a little clarification. Hey, John was afraid he couldn't say pissed off. You can say pissed off. You just, you, c you can be pissed off, but you can't be on. Yes, thank you. You can't say the thing you almost said. Okay, just here for the free drinks, gifted five subs over on Twitch. Thank you for that. Dave Schmidt gifted two as well. So nice of you. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of like TDR Encore, Ted Cruz says. Thank you. Uh, Dirtflyer said, is Jake on vacation or did he decide to become a monk? I'm going to guess not monk. They're not big fans of the rage thing, usually. <laughs> the rage <laughs> thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, Carol Pack sent in a super chat to say she is such a repub. Why does the Dems put up with it? Get 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 that out. Hate grubs. Jeez. Um, hold on. Alex says centrist. John, you're better than that, brother. I was being very very sarcastic. Yeah, he's good at that. I called her a centrist fiscal hawk. I wasn't being honest. <laughs> Love you, Alex, but I was not being honest. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the super chat. Here's more news. Okay, I need to end in Bastia, Welcome which is right around the corner. We're gonna do, we're gonna tack on another myself. Thank you for joining us. recording if we can uh, get I it. I believe Jank is going to be back next week, correct? Yes, Jank yes. will be back by all accounts Tuesday next week. And we have okay. election coverage, so you're gonna get to see him on the main show as well as on that. So that should be a lot of fun. I don't know how to make it sound like I'm done with a sentence. <laughs> Saturday cannot come soon enough. Saturday cannot come soon we enough. News to talk about people. Let's jump into this. When I was a little girl, I was told at the beach if I dug a hole deep enough, we would reach China. So we've always felt a con connection there. What? China's a little bit angry with Nancy Pelosi. Not specifically for what she said in that, although if they were, I'd understand it. It was weird. But no, they're mad that she visited Taiwan. We knew that they were going to be, and they've reacted pretty much as we expected they would. Uh, but some of the reactions weren't just of the military bluster and uh, exercise variety. They're also specifically. Let's see what I can grab her. here. 
They imposed undefined sanctions on Nancy Pelosi and her immediate family members on Friday after she infuriated Beijing with this trip to Taiwan. Uh, but just to be clear, she is still allowed to use the uh, tons of information that she gets from her position as speaker to uh, influence her stock trades and vastly outperform the market year after year after year after year. She's still able to do hmm. that. Despite I'll tell you what, guys. Sanctions, is it looks like I actually need to travel anyway, her about to this, this place myself. Wait, hold on. Bastille. Perfect. Of, uh, Never mind, we're going to tack on a little short trip. Sort of the implication that they would murder the Speaker of the House. It hasn't come to that. Um, but I do want to spotlight co-founder of Code okay. Pink, Medea Benjamin, who Here said, Way to go, Speaker Pelosi. Your visit to Taiwan really helped global cooperation on critical issues like the environment. And that is a reference to the fact that in addition to the sanctions, China's foreign ministry has also announced it's ending talks with the U.S. on climate change, military issues, anti-drug measures, and other matters in uh, retaliation for the speaker's visit. So I, I don't know how serious those talks were. I imagine this is a big blow diplomatically. Um, but they're saying it's, it's all due to Pelosi's visit. What do you think? So Chinese foreign policy Get is very ready. difficult Turn and left. intricate. And I will try to oversimplify it in a way that makes everyone feel when you enter the process of learning about Chinese foreign policy, you learn one thing. Don't make China lose face. Don't embarrass China. They will lash out irrationally. They're, they don't like being embarrassed. Very Chinese, typically. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's, yeah. Well, it's, but it's specifically like Chinese foreign policy is don't embarrass me. And there is a powder keg of embarrassment sitting off the coast of mainland China called Taiwan. It was everyone that says, like, I like that you want to do a communist revolution, but I'm going to start a new country. And America has tiptoed in this amazing way. It's we have like this one Get China, in. two China, China, red China, blue China foreign policy, where it's like, ah, it's like it's you know we, we're not taking sides here. We're gonna call you China as a whole thing, but just think of it as how like in the World Cup, Wales and England both have teams, but they're all the UK. Like hard to explain and very weird. Turn right so that's one thing. And then so I, they off. have cover at least for saying we are reacting in a way that everyone with one ounce of knowledge of Chinese foreign policy knows we're about to. If you go to Taiwan, but we don't have a policy against going there. That's not a thing. So um, and off. so she's not violating any policy. People just haven't done this in a while. Yeah. Right. So that gets to like the most key element of this that's right for everyone's analysis to jump in. Is this stuff that China is doing because they're embarrassed globally, or is this stuff they want to do anyway? And this is cover for them to say, we're out of uh, climate change talks, we're out of this, we're out of that, or is it a combination of both? And the combination of both approach really has encapsulated China foreign policy since they woke up from their 100-year nap. They're doing things like, I'm going to build an airport in your country, don't worry about it. And I'm going to build roads in your country. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. I'm friendly China. And if we continue these friendly uh, relationships, I will use that infrastructure to my benefit to build what they're calling the one road around the world to help you guys with your country, but also transport all my stuff around the country in ways that benefit me. And if you default on your loans, it's good for me anyway, because now I just own the airport in Zimbabwe. Like, that's, that's Chinese foreign policy in a nutshell. And the truth is, my guess is, Nancy Pelosi, if you are intimidated by Nancy Pelosi taking a trip, you're not a superpower. It seems uh, like yeah. they are just doing things they wanted to do anyway, and that Nancy's going to call their bluff. And at the end of the day, I don't think this will tangibly result in thermonuclear war because China has proven in the last 75 years that they're smarter than that, more deliberate, and their plans don't revolve around, like, a uh, hotel tonight reservation she made. They, revol they revolve around, like, we've been wanting to do this for 100 years. Yeah. The end. Yeah, so um, I don't know China policy uh, very well at all. I definitely know that today they decided to fly missiles over Taiwan for the first time ever. And also that at least, I think it was, uh, what, 68 Chinese warplanes and at least 13 uh, warships, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, have been circling around uh, Taiwan and essentially doing these maneuvers on their coastline. And so it's clear that China is pissed in some way or it wanted to use this opportunity to flex. And I don't think that this is a great thing to do in this moment, particularly 
when you're seeing China look at Russia and Russia try to take what it believes it is entitled to. And it just really seems like not the best time to be engaging in this. As in, what's the point of it all? Do we really need to put ourselves in a situation where we need to get into a more war or any kind of conflict, especially when we've got another virus mm -hmm. uh, potentially looming? I'm just, I'm tired. Can't we just chill for a bit? We got the midterms coming up. Can't Nance just hang out somewhere? You know, it's like, it's like, I don't know, go to the coast in like Connecticut or just do something. I don't even know if there's a coast there. I own a home there, but I don't know. Go somewhere, go to the Hamptons. Like, why you gotta go to China or Taiwan and start this mess with China? I just, I don't have time right now. I'm tired. Damn, uh, trains are I frequent on this island. Coast. Yeah. I hope. Okay. And maybe there was a bomb drop, I don't know. Good. Yeah, um, where else would they get their quahog? Anyway, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, look. I, I I'm assuming that there is not going to be war. I think that would be bad for pretty much everyone. Probably them, I would imagine. So let's not do it. Uh, that said, in terms of like them doing the stuff that they feel they have to do, like as you're saying, to not save. You know, like, like you wouldn't lose face if you just like projected that you didn't have a problem with it. Yeah, she could visit. Whatever. We're doing our whole thing. We got a big military building stuff all over. What do we care what she does? That could be perceived as strength. Um, they decided to go a different direction. So as uh, Adrian was alluding to, uh, they conducted drills, uh, more than 10 warships, uh, more than 100 aircraft. They launched 11 ballistic missiles in the waters near uh, the coast of Taiwan. Seems and, a little excessive. Um, I, you know, I have to assume that if you're living in Taiwan or if you're, even if you're living in China, you gotta be pretty scared when you see stuff like this. Um, so I don't begrudge them that. From my point of view, I've literally never understood this sort of thing. Like, you launch the missiles into the water to prove that you have missiles. We know that you have missiles. Well, we know that you have 11 fewer missiles than you did before. It's just so... And then they, they send the boats through, and they send the planes through. We knew you had the boats. We knew you had the planes. Throw a rock in the water, honestly. I don't understand it. I know I'm being, like, I'm being weird or whatever. It just seems needless. Because then they do it, and then we have to do it. So uh, we're going to be putting um, aircraft and warships through the, uh, the Taiwan Strait, conducting air and maritime transits through the Taiwan Strait in the next few weeks. So this is all, this, you know, China's going to make a little bit of, or spend a little bit of money. What the hell are we doing? Missiles. We're going to spend a bunch of money to do this. And we're really mad about what they're doing too. Like they get blustery and then we get blustery. We've summoned the Chinese ambassador as the crisis escalates. And by the way, we have a statement from Antony Blinken who says, there is no justification for this extreme, disproportionate, and escalatory military response. These provocative actions are a significant escalation. They've taken dangerous acts to a new level. By doing the things that I just previewed, we're going to be doing in like a week. Uh, how dare you do the planes and the ships? Hey, can we send some planes and ships over there? It's provocative when you do it. Can we, can we get a, an aircraft carrier over there? Yeah, it's all done. It's all stupid, but and it's all like me a boy, me want a rattle saber. Pierre making 805 in euros. China play internationally is one of yes, they position a lot of, they want to control their waterways, and we largely have controlled those waterways, um, and they also have an economic plan. And the time to be afraid of their military plan yeah. is when their economic plan shows shines shows shows signs of failing. That's when you really need to get worried about it. I just don't think now is exactly the time of that. For that Patrick made 7,000. You know, uh, stay tuned on it. And also, I want to say that, like, I'm trying to find out why Nancy Pelosi would go. One would be a personal financial interest yes. that she's forwarding, maybe. But the other one is they are making this giant play in the Democratic Party to appeal to, like, the, tradi the suburban Republican. And one thing you can do to message to suburban Republicans is to say, I am tough on China, generically. <laughs> and this is a move, hilariously, in you know the, the global theater, to land a plane and get off for 18 hours in Taipei or wherever the hell she is. That's it. That's, that's how hilarious foreign policy is. But it's definitely no joke to be sitting on the beach in, in Taiwan and to see a bunch of missiles fly in the air. You already know how close yeah. they are, but to see like those vapor trails or whatever behind it is terrifying, and that's why they do it. Yeah, and if this is Nancy's way of distracting from her husband's DUI, we really gotta talk. <laughs> like, you need to get a better publicist or something, because it didn't have to be this deep. It really didn't. <laughs> you want a drink? Let's go to Taiwan, dude. Yeah.
Uh, you know, and some have speculated that very early on. All around the Isle of Beauty. You know what? Maybe we'll just do the entire island. And this could be, you know, as, as this recording. Of her career, a legacy thing, perhaps. Or it could be a combination of multiple of these. We're also making progress uh, on Imperator. In, uh, LA being new. That would be nice. Hey, World of Trucks sign. Anyway, hey. uh, why don't we move to other news? Ten. Less apocalyptic. Still pretty big scale, though. Twitter has responded to some of the claims that Elon Musk has made against them in his bid to call off his, uh, uh, was it $44 billion be, uh, deal to buy Twitter, uh, saying that his arguments make absolutely no sense and he should still be obligated to buy the corporation at the originally agreed upon price. So uh, Twitter sued him last month, saying that he's on the hook. That was the deal. He countersued and submitted explanations for why he didn't want it anymore. Um, and if it Get sounds ready. dismissive for me to say he didn't want it anymore, that's what it's about. That is actually what it is. Just because he has hundreds of billions of dollars doesn't mean he's not a kid, which he turn is. Right. Uh, let's and see. They say right. uh, the counterclaims made by Musk are a made-for-litigation tale that is contradicted by the evidence turn and right. common sense. They call this complaint factually inaccurate, legally insufficient, and commercially irrelevant. So, uh, what are some of the claims that he has made? What should cause uh, a, a judge to dissolve this financial agreement? He accuses the company of intentionally miscounting the number of spam accounts it hosts to juice its user metrics. Uh, he said it's a scheme to mislead investors about the company's prospects. He Let's see if we can just go this way. Leading for Twitter to rely on the metric MDAU or monetized daily active Twitter users as a basis for revenue. Uh, those are interesting claims. And they are reasons to not enter into a financial agreement to buy Twitter. They were making, they were using that as a basis for their claims of revenue before you uh, signed an agreement to buy the corporation. You could have looked into the bot thing before you signed on the dotted line. He didn't do that. This is the work that a serious investor, a serious businessman would do when there aren't billions of dollars on the line. And thus, Either he is as irresponsible as Twitter and I are making him out to be, or those are not actually his reasons for wanting to get out of the deal. I personally think that that is a better explanation for it. But right. uh, they've rebutted more of his... We're going for the Isle of Beauty achievement. That, um, but this uh, legal battle continues, and uh, they're... I so think, what we need now... A pretty strong defense against his bid to get out is... Of it. Adrian, what do you think? No, I... External contract so that's well. going to go down to something that ends well, in part because it's like trying to force someone to marry you. Porto Vichucci, is that right? Is that where I'm going? Is that the last if, one? Uh, for some reason, which is very rare, no. if it happens, the court were to order specific performance Beneficio. to buy this company, which is unlikely to happen. If anything, the court would award some form of damages uh, that Musk and his entities would have to pay to Twitter. Uh, but it just, this really shows you what happens when billionaires try to get into a game and they're used to not having to ever be accountable to anything and to be able to manipulate stocks and make problems okay. and not necessarily face uh, critical consequences. And Twitter isn't here to play with Elon Musk. And especially since Twitter had requested that this case be expedited, mm -hmm. that took away a lot of the wind in Musk's sails in terms of being able to, you know, keep the upper hand in the case. Well, let's see if we can have something that travels through it or near it. If we can get near it, that'll work. So let's let's just drop off here. story is if Twitter had secretly revealed that they'd secretly, like, been using AI to learn how to be the best S poster. Like, they've been using all the, like, great... Like uh, trolls <laughs> to expertly troll him. That's pretty far away. I love claims like this. I love these like little you know statements that we're reading from because it is lawyers. I don't want to go to like, Italy it though. Obviously, every bit of evidence. That would land me in Italy. Time shows, and they use this very fluffy language to do something that I think we all know in our guts, which is that Twitter was ice cream that Elon Musk wanted to buy. Oh, well, that'd be probably too long to tack onto the end of this recording now. Obvious that it, that that was a mistake he wanted to pull out, and I agree. I in my well, everything I've read, I'm not. See so if we can go and find a short one. Right, it just seems like tw Twitter is like, wait, it was a fake out, but that was a sort of illegal kind of fake out, and we are entitled to some kind of damages. And when it's like it's all right, dollars, for anybody who is so watching good. later on YouTube, so I guess I would like to thank you for watching. This has been Eurotrack Simulator 2, presented by Improvision Entertainment. I've been Hunterman, and I will see you in the future.